If you've been trying to sell anything online, I reckon that some people have recommended to you along the years, whether it's friends, family, YouTubers, that you should market using a blog. I know that I have recommended it numerous times, and whenever you're looking into marketing pretty much anything using a blog, every tutorial out there is going to go with strategies or platforms and the most common question that I actually get when it comes to blog marketing is how do I actually write a blog post? And even if you take into account using different AI tools, you're still going to need to tell the AI what to write if you want to make a blog post to promote something. And that's what this video is about. It's a part of our how to market using a blog series that I, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm finally making that. And yes, we will have actual tutorials in this series that are more technical, like blogging platforms, blogging techniques, marketing for blogs and all that. But today I really wanted to sort of get this out of the way. How are you actually supposed to write a blog post? Like, how do you even start? What words are you going to use? We're going to write three blog posts together. We're going to use three different tools. We're going to have three different purposes for each and every one of these blog posts. And if you look at the reason why I'm doing something, the technique behind it, the thought, behind it and not just the actual example of that specific product, you'll realize that these blog post techniques that I'm about to show you can be used to promote your print-on-demand products, your printables, your KDP books, affiliate links, and pretty much anything that is sold online. And with that being said, let's just get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo and I teach creative people how to make money online. And for those of you who have been watching my channel, you know that I love blogs. I love blogs. I love blogging. I love blog posts. The written word SEO, my god, this has made me so much money along the years. And even when it comes to my Redbubble store, I was pretty much marketing it from 2017 with two photos on a sidebar of a blog that talks about shopping. And there are so many ways to make money using a blog. And I hope that in this tutorial, it will make you understand how to actually write a blog post, how to approach writing a blog post and I'm pretty sure that those of you who are using AI tools will get a different perspective on how to use them and those of you who are thinking oh there's no way I can write a blog post you're gonna see that you can because in today's video I'm gonna be writing three different blog posts I'm gonna be writing them probably on like a Google Doc or something because I don't want the medium in which I'm using to affect you which means I don't want to do something like how to write a blog post on WordPress because maybe you're using a different program, a different app, maybe it's a newsletter, maybe you're writing blog posts on Medium or other blogging platforms. I want to give you the rundown of how you actually write a blog post. And yes, we will have technical tutorials, how to create a WordPress blog, how to create blogs and web newsletters on Substacks and Beehive and a million other tools. But first, this is the most important one, how to actually do it. As I mentioned, I'm going to be writing three different blog posts and each post has a different approach to promoting a product or an entire store or a collection or category of products. I'm going to be using three different tools to be writing these blog posts. The first one is Copy AI, which is a tool that I spoke about in this channel before ChatGPT became a thing. And to be honest, I kind of like it better than I like ChatGPT. The second tool is going to be ChatGPT. So it's a free version because Copy AI is a paid version. And the third AI tool that I'm going to be using to write these blog posts today is actually not going to be AI. It's just going to be I as intelligence, as in myself, because I will be writing the third blog post showing you that it's not that big of a deal. You're also going to get a sneak peek into one of my bathroom design projects. I still need to finish it and I kind of want to change the template of it, but you're also going to get a sneak peek into that. Um, with that said, I'm just going to do like my magic trick and I'm small down here in the corner. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to Copy AI. And I'm here at Copy AI. I'm actually on their chat feature because they also have a chat feature, which I kind of like better than ChatGPT. And with Copy AI, I'm going to do the first blog post type, which is I'm going to blog answers to a question. There is a question. I'm going to answer it with many answers. One of these answers or some of them is referring to my product and that's one technique to do it and let me explain for example I would like to promote where are you this I have too cool for a costume 
t-shirt that I did on Tee Public. Let's open it up. And I'm thinking to myself, I would like to promote that. Or even, I'm pretty sure that I have some stuff on Redbubble like dresses and cool stuff like that that could be considered as a costume. And the topic of my blog post in this case would be Halloween costume ideas for lazy people. And I hope that some of you can already like begin to understand how this kind of topic relates to selling my Tee Public t-shirt. Let's start by telling Copy AI what to do. Write me a blog post title, Best Halloween Costume Designs for Lazy People. Provide at least, uh, I want it to be really good, eight ideas. Go. One of the things that I really like about Copy AI is that I can pretty much copy paste anything here to the side so I can use it later with my other project. So I can use multiple tools in Copy AI and put it here. This is by no means a full Copy AI tutorial. There was one. Let's see what it's doing. Ooh, hello. Okay. Halloween is just around the corner and if you're someone who likes to celebrate the holiday but doesn't want to put in a ton of effort into your costume, we've got you covered. Okay, so there is an emoji mask. Keep it simple and trending with an emoji mask. Okay, that's kind of cool. Arrow 414 costume not found. Does anyone want to design that now? I'm pretty sure that I'm going to design that. The lazy tourist embrace the tourist stereotype by wearing a, a loud Hawaiian t-shirt, a funny pack, cargo shorts, and socks with sandals. Sleeping beauty if you're extra lazy, serial killer, oh wow, identity thief, rock, paper, scissors, Halloween costume t-shirt. Okay, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to copy all of this here. Wait, we have a lot of other posts that I've done before this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy this here because this is my area of working. Can I move this? Why can't I move this? And what I like to explain to you is the workflow when you're doing something like this, because again, this is not how to put this on WordPress. What you're gonna to need to do is change a few of these words because Google does know how to scan for articles written by AI. What we have here is valid ideas, and I dare to say actionable ideas, because I actually wanna create this costume now. I literally want to create this costume, like Arrow 414 costume, costume not found. In this case, if this was something that I was doing for one of my blogs, I would totally create this costume immediately, which means that right here in this section, when you're actually doing the blog post on the platform, I would insert a photo of this costume and a link to it. And I'm pretty much sure I'm going to do that today. This is a really good idea. Oh my God. Why am I doing this to myself? My ADHD is horrible. Now we have the lazy tourist stereotype by wearing a loud Hawaiian t-shirt. If you have any all over print t-shirt, you can put it here if it's like Hawaiian or a fanny pack that says I'm a tourist or anything relating to any of these. We have the sleeping beauty. If you're extra lazy, why not dress up as a sleeping beauty? Okay. Um, serial killer. I think you can also put it some on like a, on like a t-shirt as well. Identity thief. But the thing is, that it also gave me the ha Halloween costume t-shirt. When all I spells go for a classic Halloween costume t-shirt. For example, here is also a good place to put my t-shirt, the one that I wanted to promote. Too cool for a costume. So in this case, if this is what I want to do, what I will do here is instead of the Halloween costume t-shirt that they wrote, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to write while a lot of people might call you lazy, we know the truth. You're simply too cool for a costume. And in that place, I will put this photo in. And that is technique number one. I asked a question or presented a topic, which is best Halloween costume designs for lazy people. And the answer was at least one of my products. And if this is the model, what you can do is basically ask a question. What to buy your mom for Mother's Day? What to buy to your girlfriend? And I actually made a blog post earlier, which is cool gift ideas for guitar players. And there is like a guitar tuner, guitar strap, guitar pick holder. Who has a guitar pick holder? But fine. Guitar capo. I think they have nice ones on AliExpress and Amazon. Guitar effects pedal. I kind of want to buy this now myself. Guitar stand strap locks. Guitar polish and care kit, guitar wall art. This would be an excellent place to put in something. If you have like a beautiful guitar on a piece of poster on a canvas, you can put it here. 
And again, with all of these, with Halloween costume t-shirts, with the guitar, you can also use affiliate links. So if you're affiliated with Etsy, if you're affiliated with Society6, which you should be if you're selling on the platform, Zazzle, if you're a Redbubble affiliate, Amazon affiliate, all of these can come in here. And the reason why I made this is because I also have, let me just hop on over here, is because I also have a sound and music category in my T Public store, and I do have t-shirts and designs targeting guitar players. So this is method number one. And I wrote some more ideas for this method. For example, I wrote the gifts for musician, gifts for mom, gifts for girlfriend. Are you ready for the new school year? What are the things that you need to get ready for the new school year or the new college university year? One of these things can be tie-dye backpacks that I'm selling on Redbubble. So there are a lot of things that you can do. Just try and think of it this way. Look at a product and say, what kind of broad question can someone ask that my product is going to be a part of the answer? And that's what you're writing. Even theme ideas for birthdays is a great way to open up, especially if you're selling on Zazzle and you're selling things like paper cups or invitations for themed birthday parties. Moving on to topic number two, blogging about a general topic that my audience might like while trying to sell my product at the bottom. So in the previous blog post, my product was one of the answers to a question. I was literally talking about my product. But in our second case, I'm not gonna display my product at all. My product is not gonna be a part of the blog post. I am gonna blog about something and a product is gonna be next to it. And in this case, I chose my dark magenta custom name gratitude journal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to ChatGPT because I told you that the second one is going to be with ChatGPT. And we're going to tell him, write me a blog post titled The Importance of Gratitude, talking about why it is important to practice gratitude daily, how to be more grateful in your life, and ends with 16 gratitude journaling prompts. Now, I know that a lot of people like write me a blog post about t-shirts or write me a blog post about this. No, you need to guide the app what to do. Oh, wow, it's going. Oh, it's brilliant. I love it. I love it so much. Oh, it did exactly what I wanted. Huh. It did exactly what I wanted. Oh, it's even writing an outro. Okay. Am I going to read the whole thing, right? In the hustle and bustle of your daily lives, it's easy to overlook the simple yet profound act of gratitude. I love this intro. Okay, why practice gratitude daily? To have a positive mindset, enhance your relationships. That is totally true. Stress reduction, improve mental health, how to be more grateful in your life, morning gratitude ritual, journaling, mindful moments, express appreciation. This is beautiful. And then 16 journaling prompts to help you get started. You can, you know, add to help you get started incorporating gratitude. You see this thing. Now, whether you're blogging on Medium, on Substack, on WordPress, whether you're blogging on your Shopify store blog or on Squarespace, you copy all of this, you change the words a little bit just to make it flow a bit better. Sometimes I even make grammar mistakes on purpose. I found that my articles that have grammar mistakes tend to keep people more engaged because it gets them thinking about this. I don't know. Maybe it's just an old statistics, but it used to work for me. And the thing is that right after this post will end, this post is not selling anyone anything. And I think that's the beauty of it because a lot of people get this like anti vibe when they know someone is trying to sell them. So you're not selling anything in this post. You can even create this, make like 15 gratitude journaling prompts as a freebie printable or something. But when you're writing this entire blog post at the end or on the sidebar, there will be a link to this, your custom name, Gratitude Journal, and the image will be linked to this product. In this case, because it's on Zazzle, I would like to remind you that whenever you share a product, if you look at the link, it shares your reference as well, so you can qualify for affiliate commission, whether it's an added commission for this product or if someone ends up buying from someone else. And I feel like in this case, I would also like to drop you into what I did with Design Your Bathroom, which is the bathroom project. So I wrote a blog post about what plants should you add to your bathroom. I am not selling plants, but we are talking about, again, concept number two of a blog post is to write about a general topic while placing the product that reference that, that relates to that audience on the side or at the bottom. 
So in this case, I wrote, you know, most people think that uh, bathroom plants are boring and unattractive, but there are ones that are really good, like peace lilies, aloe vera. I found a photo of an aloe vera on Pixabay. Snake plant. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I do not know how to read this. Dra... Drashene... No, Drakane. I'm sorry, I'm reading like... Like, as if I was Romanian right now. Where Nick... Yeah, I have no idea how to read this. Found a photo of that as well. These plants are suited for bathroom conditions. And a conclusion with the photo and right under it enhance your bathroom click here to shop the latest trends let's click here notice it was an affiliate link it disappeared because it's my own shop and if i'm gonna view the public storefront because that's what people see they can see some of the latest products that i have loaded collections and different things that they can use by from me to enhance their bathroom and make it prettier. That is a very good example of how a very general blog post can do that. And also, this is not the only thing that's going on here. Like I made this banner once, by the way, this is done with Kiro. But this is not the only thing that's going on here because I don't know if you noticed, but there is also a link to Society6. There's also like a shower curtain to Society6. This is actually not mine. This is a viewer of the channel, Bambara Art. So it has my affiliate link, if you can see here, curator at Arroyo Art. And below this, this is actually an affiliate link to my entire Van Gogh bath decor collection on Zazzle. And that basically sums up my second way of writing a blog post, which is to write a blog post that goes to an audience that might like my product. And I wrote a few other examples for this kind of blog. Let's say, for example, you're on Society6. And looking at the products, you can make like a yoga and wellness blog and then write articles about the benefits of doing yoga. And on the sidebar, there is a beautiful yoga mat that you designed. Also, the benefits of running and there are leggings or a t-shirt for someone who likes to run. So there are a lot of things that you can do if you just think about one of the items that you made, one of the designs that you made and who would like that. That person that would like that, what else do they like to talk about? I feel like this also goes with things relating to life conditions, life situations, restrictions in life, and dietary choices. Because you can sell your I'm vegan, I'm keto, or all of these t-shirts, or even I'm gluten intolerant t-shirts, in a blog that contains recipes for people who are on that specific diet. Just uh, food for thought while we're talking about food. Moving on to the third option, and in that case, we're downgrading from AI to simply I. I'm gonna open here a new Google Doc. And in this case, I'm gonna write a blog post completely by myself. Now, before I'm gonna do that, if you just wanna make me feel good about myself, and so far you like this video and found this content useful, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button down below because every time you do that, it really does help my channel and subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. Moving on to blog post type number three. And in here, I am talking about blogging about a trend some kind of topic, some kind of a compilation of things where each paragraph references a product or a set of products. Now, in my case, I'm going to go to Society6 and these are my shower curtains on Society6. I also opened them on Redbubble. Oh, blessed me for, for remembering to prepare myself for this video, finally. So I'm going to reference things that I designed on Society6 and on Redbubble in this blog post and I'm going to show you a little bit more of the process and yes again obviously no one writes a blog post on Google Drive Docs but this is where we're going to write it and I do recommend at the beginning when you're starting to write blog posts maybe practice writing them not on the platform that you're writing them on just to get the hang of like sitting and writing instead of thinking about how it's going to look on a platform. Now what I'm going to do is as I mentioned talk about trending topics relating to selling shower curtains. So 2000, 2024 shower curtain trends. Hottest shower curtain trends, yeah? Let's go for hottest. Awesome. Now you might think that at this point I'm gonna go to ChatGPT or to Copy AI or even to Google and ask them what are the hottest shower curtain trends? 
And here's where you're going to be wrong. I'm not going to ask anyone what the shower curtain trends are. This is going to be on my website, so I'm going to decide what they are. And if that sounds a bit ridiculous to you, that I'm going to say the top hottest shower curtain trends while sitting here in Bulgaria uh, having a shower curtain. I think I have a shower curtain from like two years ago or a year ago from China. If you think that it's ridiculous that I'm going to be the one writing about the trends, then you have no idea who the writers are of the other trends. Because the truth is, yes, some big publications write about trends because they do see what the market is doing, but other people just make this up. You know why? Because we can. And I recommend doing it because I honestly think that all of these trends are really nice. Okay, let's go. No AI tools. No one likes a boring bathroom and no one should have a boring bathroom. So today we'll go over the top trends in shower curtains for 2024 for you to be able to style your bathroom as easily as hanging a new curtain, new shower curtain. Now what I'm going to do is literally go over the shower curtains that I'm selling. I can also go over other people if they're on Etsy or Society6 or Zazzle because I'm an affiliate of all of those. But for the sake of this, you can see that I have some liquid art. Okay. I think I actually already did that research thing. Yeah, I already did. It's on my notes. Okay. Let's see what I wrote. I already thought about it. I told you I can't prepare this time. Okay, that's going to be tie-dye shower curtains. Black and white shower curtains. Art parody. Shower curtains like my Mona Lisa and my uh, Van Dog <laughs> Starry Cow <laughs> designs. Nautical shower curtains, they're always on trend. Okay. Fruit pattern shower curtains and neurographics. Or neurographic art actually might be better. I do have those. Okay. These are the trends. Obviously, you can add some more because I'm pretty sure I'm going to find something like pink shower curtains. Bohemian? Boho. Yeah. Shower curtains. Now, what I'm going to do here is, for example, let's check out my tie-dye shower curtains. Do I have them? No, I have them just on Redbubble, I think. It's from the latest AI annoying thing that I'm doing. What I can do is have both of these images. Where is the second one? This one. Featured in the blog post, basically here under tie-dye shower curtains. And I'm going to write something like... Okay, sorry for looking like this all the time. My screen where I'm looking at is very far from me. Okay, so I wrote, with celebrities starting to wear tie-dye dresses and t-shirts again, in late 2020, the tie-dye trend is back. And it's not just back for your closet, it's also back for your bathroom. We have seen an insane rise in designs with tie-dye for bathroom, for bathrooms, including the two tie-dye shower curtains here. And this is where you put those photos. Click on the photos to see these tie-dye shower curtains and get into, into this bath decor trend. Now, this is something, for example, that I can repeat myself at the end of each and every one of these paragraphs. So click on the photos to see these or this, depending if I put one or two or three. And it gives me a little bit more of that keywords involved here for tie-dye shower curtains, for example, and for bath decor trend or for this 2024 bath decor trend. And basically what you have to do is go over different platforms and search for this. So black and white shower curtains, if I'm looking here and let's say I can't find these in my store, even though I have this one, it's a coloring shower curtain. What was I thinking? I will be basically searching for someone else on Society6 that is selling this. Oh, okay, this is actually really nice. But also this, is that tie-dye? Kind of looks very tie-dye, I like it. 
So for those of you who don't know, for Society6, you can be a seller and an affiliate. So what I'm going to do if I'm going to be promoting this shower curtain, I'm not going to take this shower curtain directly, like the link. I'm going to take the photo. I'm not going to take this link. I'm going to take the link here, which is my curator's link. So I can still get affiliate commission if someone purchases anything. And basically all you have to do is write a few words or sentences about each and every one of these trends. And if you don't know what is trending or if you really want to take an idea of something that is trending, all you have to do is go to bed and bath and shower curtains. Okay, nautical or golden. This one is floral or exotic. These ones are bohemian, totally abstract bohemian. We have geometrical or luxurious. This one can be considered nautical. We have hilarious or funny shower curtains. We have nautical again. I think you get the vibe and that's what you do to fill up these slots. I do want to show you my art parody shower curtains just because I'm obsessed with them and I just love them so much. I'm thinking about getting this one. It's the pink Mona Lisa. <laughs> I just loved doing it so much. I think I have more Mona Lisas here, but mostly I just like my Starry Night. So I have a Starry Night Van Dog design here. I also have Starry Cows. And this again can be an idea of its own for a blog post or here as a category inside a blog post. And that would be a blog post written by me. I feel like I'm being a bit lazy not writing the full thing here. So maybe I'll take you through something that I already did on Design Your Bathroom. And let's randomly pick animal print shower curtains for kids. I do five styles to design your bathroom. Okay, five styles to design your bathroom. The bathroom is one of the most important rooms in any home serving both functional and aesthetic purposes. We have traditional bath decor. We have coastal bath decor. So in the case of coastal back decor, which is the same as nautical, a little bit different, but yeah, it's another keyword. What I did is I added three photos here from my Sazzle store. This one is to a coastal theme, like a coastal color palette shower curtain. This one is a coastal painting wall art, and I used a mock-up from Canvi of the bathroom for it because, you know, it needs to look good. And one of my candles, because Zazzle actually has like print-on-demand candles that are not on the jar but on the actual candle which is amazing modern bath decor in this case i didn't even add anything because you don't always have to sell the whole thing is like i'm showing you these photos to show an example of the trend you don't have to buy it eclectic bath decor this is not from my store this is from full on nostalgia i think it's a viewer of the channel as well and i put that as an example and again this is my affiliate link curator arroyo arts and this is a guitar starry night photo, a painting over a bathroom, rustic bath decor, and that's it. And then there is enhance your bathroom. Let's do another one before we get out of this idea. Let's go with bathroom walls. I think I have only one here. I really don't have time to work on this project. Bathroom wall tiles and to peel and stick. That's a keyword. Why would you want to use peel and stick stickers? like bathroom wall tiles. Why do you want to use them? And then a bunch of photos of those. And all of these are from various sellers on Etsy. All of these are links. All of these are affiliate links, sharing a link to an Etsy seller. And none of these products are mine. However, I still have this as my product. This is going to my store. This is an affiliate link. And that's how you use a blog or a blog post to basically promote your print and demand products. Thing is with all of these examples is that these are random examples and I made them random on purpose because I wanted to try and hit different types of products that you might be selling. However, you do have to understand that if you're all over the place selling so many different things, you're not going to be able to blog about all of them. Yes, we have websites and stores that sell all of these things like AliExpress, but they're huge. And yes, you can make this insane online shopping magazine that covers everything. But I really recommend you focus on something, whether it's a home decor blog, whether it's a bathroom decor blog, for all I care, make a curtains blog. Blog about a specific product or blog about a lifestyle. Even in a blog post about being a vegan, I can assure you that you can put a bohemian style shower curtain on a sidebar and it's gonna get sold if enough people are gonna reach the blog post and read it because there is a direct correlation in statistics between people who eat vegan food and people who like this kind of like minimalistic, modern, aesthetic, bohemian look in their decor. 
So I really recommend that you try and figure out how do your products fall into these categories or what could be this blogging idea. And one thing that I do want to mention again is that this is part two of our blogging series. We are going to have more technical parts coming up. Part number three is going to be on WordPress. So we're going to actually build a blog from start to finish. We won't have to teach how to make a blog post because we already did it here. And part number four, we're going to be talking about Substack. I am looking into more unique and cool blogging tools. And part number five, I think would be about marketing because yes, your blog needs marketing as well. However, I do know that no matter how inclusive I'm going to try and be with my examples, a lot of you might still have questions. And for that, there is a Google form in the description down below to basically ask your blogging questions. If you have any other question to me that is not about blogging, please don't do it there. There are other forms for that, or you can leave a comment or email me. But if you have a question about blogging, please do it there and try and make it as detailed as possible. So I'll be able to answer that in a video. I don't know if you came today watching this video knowing how to write a little bit creatively or fully knowing that you're going to use an AI, but I do hope that you learn something about the approach to a blog post, even how to guide AI or how to actually combine it with products. And for those of you who are missing the actual part of me putting it on WordPress to understand how to do it on WordPress, again, as I mentioned, that will be the next part of this series. But I do have to say that if you feel a little bit lost with the information here, perhaps you need to take a step back. The first part of the blogging series that was about a month ago or a few weeks ago, I literally went over six different options or methods of using a blog and blog post to promote your products. And I really recommend that you watch that video next. But with that being said, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! So before we jump into the last part, what was I saying? No, Bulgarski. English? Um... Receptia. Woman in reception. Right now. Receptia. Dobre. Prijaten den. Ciao. I really need to tune my guitar. I really do. Well, it's time to work, right? I can tune my guitar after I do some work. <sighs> Write me a blog post titled The Importance of Gratitude Talking About... Okay. Write me about... What the... What is wrong with my mouth? Okay.